Today, I'd like to talk about dating. And if you don't remember dating, it's that thing that your parents did with all the extra money they had from not having to pay off college loans. If the global pandemic has done anything other than kill millions of people and show off the gaping holes in our government support structure, it's made us all sadder and hornier. But while there are a lot of people on the internet with advice on dating and attracting a worthy partner, one darker corner of the modern human mating ritual has perked my attention recently. Dating coaches, or what used to be called pickup artists. And while the world of picking up women may be a little mysterious to you outside of things like the movie Hitch, Crazy Stupid Love, and that one episode of Wayne Days with Paul Rudd, it has been a very active and influential community from the 1990s to today. Okay, Randy. Now tell me, without looking at your hand, what are the three beginner techniques for picking up a woman at a bar? Isolate her from her friends, repeat her name in conversation, subtly put her down. Excellent. Now, before I get into it, you might be wondering, Brad, why pick up artists? And is your girlfriend okay with you watching videos of speed seduction for the past month and a half? Fair question, and she fucking hates it questioning if our ever interaction is real. What happened was, during my hours of research watching Joe Rogan videos on YouTube for my last essay, I started getting more and more targeted ads from dating coaches. My name's Christian, and one more warning, if you're a woman, this presentation is going to make you uncomfortable because the discoveries I'm going to share about what women want, what they secretly crave, are really messed up, and I promise you've never heard this before. I guess the internet knows Rogan's fan base, Lonely Dudes. If you have a million people watching a YouTube video, are we talking about a yeah. hundred people yeah, that are right. cunts? A thousand? Is it even a th I don't even think it's Is a thousand. Is it two hundred? It yeah. might not even be a hundred. You it might, might be dealing with like thirty cunts. The more of these ads I saw, the more I was both intrigued and grossed out by what they were saying. So by the time I had watched Joe Rogan talk about jujitsu and call women bitches roughly 200 times. Huh? Sure, get up here, bitch. There's nothing you could do to make that bitch happy. This crazy Thai bitch who starts slowly poisoning your drink. I had also gotten a taste of different dating coaches' theories on how to attract women and knew it was worth investigating who these people are, how their philosophy affects men's dating habits, and if there are any helpful lessons to be learned from them. So if we were on like a coffee date or something, we're talk we'd be talking and say, I gotta get up and use the mentor. I'll be right back. Well, <laughs> look at that expression. <laughs> Did you see that response? And notice the little lick lip that she does there. Like, mmm, this is yummy. I'm actually going to be making another video after this one that dives more specifically into the types of YouTube-based dating coaches that are currently growing in numbers and which tips actually take a woman's perspective into account. But this video, this one right here, will show you the beginning, the foundation of the types of manipulative pickup tactics, misogynistic mentalities, and predatory behavior we see at bars, clubs, and on the street today. But to see that next video and all my other content about masculinity and how we evolve as men, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. Okay. So, what is a pickup artist? I mean, other than this guy. Great hair. Uh, thanks. Looks silky as shit. Whatever. Is it real? What? Well, you buy it? It's a weave? Horse hair? Dumb, cheap hooker? Who are you? It's usually a man who uses a combination of psychological gymnastics illusions, hypnotism, and manipulation in order to establish their value, seduce a woman, and get them to bed. Welcome to my world. Watch this. Watch this. Watching. Watch. Now, 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 now. Pickup artist, or PUA, is a term that sounds pretty corny to most of us today, but when pickup artist tactics became truly popular, mostly in the wake of the 2005 smash hit book, The Game, top pickup artists were revered, wealthy, and sought out by men all over the world. And if you're wondering if I read The Game, yes, yes, I did read an entire book about manipulating women for sex, so you didn't have to. Yeah, I can just feel my 
bloodline being plagued by douche exposure for the centuries to come. One day, you will be so good at this that you will teach it to your sons. While writer Neil Strauss, aka Style, is sometimes critical of the negative effects of the pickup lifestyle, the game completely romanticizes the treatment of women as objects existing only to satisfy male sexual desire, while also the book downplays the amount of consistent humiliation this philosophy causes the men involved. Oh my gosh, you have like the orangest tan I have ever seen. Oh. Pickup culture is actually to blame for now ubiquitous terms like peacocking. Peacocking. My outfit serves the dual function of icebreaker and attention getter. Uh? Wingman, a friend who assists you in attracting and taking home a woman. I'm a wingman. That's what wingmen do. And negging, a seemingly accidental insult delivered to a woman to demonstrate your lack of interest in her when you're actually very interested. Oh, hell, I'll give you 200 bucks to get rid of her for me. Oh, no, no, you're lovely. Hello. Oh, hi. I'm here. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can trust her up. You can't take her anywhere. The business of manipulating women for sex began in conference halls listening to people like the self-proclaimed guru of gash, Ross Jeffries. Oh yes, buckle up, fuckleheads. Buckle up, fucklehead. This world is full of guys who talk about women like they are floating pieces of soulless sex flesh. Respect the cock. And tame the cunt. And Tom Cruise's Frank T.J. Mackey from Magnolia is not so far from the real misogynistic philosophies of these guys. Seduce and destroy will teach you the techniques to have any hard body blonde just dripping to wet your dock. According to The Game, Ross Jeffries developed his school of speed seduction in 1988 after ending a five-year streak of sexlessness with the help of Neuro Linguistic Programming, or NLP. That's a controversial fusion of hypnosis and psychology that emerged from the personal development boom of the 1970s and led to the rise of self-help gurus like Tony Robbins, who also happens to be a sexual predator. The fundamental precept of NLP is that one's thoughts, feelings, and behavior, and the thoughts, feelings, and behavior of others can be manipulated through words, suggestions, and physical gestures designed to influence the subconscious. Ross, what do women really want? I don't care what they want. I only care what they respond to. See, my focus is a little bit different from your other guests. There's what women say they want, there's what women think they want, and then there's what they actually respond to. Now that statement is actually the bedrock of all of Jeffries' teachings and in many ways, the teachings of the long line of modern wannabe Casanovas to come. The pickup method to getting women into your bed is rooted in taking away the feelings and humanity of a woman and using a playbook or literal bag of tricks to overcome the obstacles women have developed to keep men from using them for their bodies. What's wrong with manipulation? Let, let well, me, let me make, hold on, yeah. hold on. Let me make this Are you going to make a case for manipulation? I, I am. To quote Neil Strauss in the game, every part of the pickup is designed simply to anticipate and disarm objections. And if that isn't one of the most predatory things you've heard this week, you must literally have velociraptors for roommates. I mean, not only are the raptors misogynist, but they don't knock before they open the door. Respect the space, guys. Respect the sanctity of my weird industrial kitchen bedroom. Fast forward from the 90s to the mid-2000s, an era where Maxim Magazine, The Man Show, Wedding Crashers, Californication, and Tucker Max's book, I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell, all taught young men how to be sex-entitled drunk douchebags. Tattoo on the lower back. Might as well be a bullseye. The message they carried? If you don't walk around with all the blood in your body directed solely into your penis, You'll never get a hot chick to fuck you. It is at this point in history where we meet mystery. An actual magician who used his illusions in order to shift the dynamics of any romantic situation in his favor. He's also the guy Paul Rudd is making fun of here. What's up, David? I'm Alias. Are those your clothes? Yes. No. 
Mystery is the example of pickup artists that you might think of as a little extreme, but that's why he's famous, and that's why his methods looked like they worked. I know that this will sound very uh, egotistical, but being picked up by Mystery is a fucking privilege. Do you know how hard I worked to make it fun for the girl? I am the most interesting person you're likely to meet in the next 45 days. Fear and excitement are the same adrenaline release, all right? This is exciting. To boil down the mystery method in practice, his steps for a successful interaction are, first, show yourself as unique from any other guy in the current location through either peacocking, using an interesting opening line, or a combination of both. Then you establish your value through confidence, personality, intelligence, and control over the current situation. Neg the target of your interest. Look for IOIs or indicators of interest from your target to know that you're not wasting your time. Why am I drawn to you? Uh, you need to rationalize this for me. Isolate the target or move her to another location in order to get closer physically and emotionally. And if that one sounds like it's what a serial killer does, it's because it is. It's a similar mindset. Women have fewer options for safety when they're alone. There are three separate locations, and the difficulty is getting from one location to the next to the next. Do you announce it to the girl? Do you say, now on to sex location? <laughs> and lastly, close out the interaction with a kiss or getting her number, if sex is off the table. Then quickly leave as to appear less attainable, more interesting, and even more mysterious. I am not the devil. I'm the devil's helper, man. To a lot of you, those steps might sound harmless or maybe even helpful. To a woman, there's a good chance they sound incredibly menacing and degrading. Before the game, I had never heard of dating laid out as if it were a football play, and how appealing it is for single men, many of whom have been socialized through sports, to finally have some guidelines to follow that have been proven to work. The problem with this? In no way do any of Mystery's tips ever include checking in with what a woman wants to add to the interaction. It's all a performance, filled with ridiculous gameplay, costumes, and manufactured situations. I just think it's that sort of sad to have a method. I think it's more important just to meet someone that you're attracted to and that you respect as a person. What it all boils down to is that men like Ross Jeffries, Mystery, and Neil Strauss taught a generation of lonely, horny, and desperate guys that manipulation is the best way to get the woman of your dreams. And that idea stuck. Now, I want to show hey, you... Hey, I actually need an audience's perspective on something. How do you feel about three ways? Lame or progressive? Um, uh, sorry, I'm in the middle of a video essay here. <laughs> a video essay. That's cute. I've uh, got to get back to my friends over there in a minute, but my buddy was actually wondering if it's a guy's place to be commenting on what women think and feel. That's a fair question. I mean, my goal with this has been to promote empathy and kind of hold a critical eye to I, some of the- I'm flame. Did you know that you blink a lot when you watch videos? It means that you make a lot of your choices from your heart. Okay, okay, Flame, I gotta keep going with the video. Uh, the audience really wants me to get to my point. Wow. <laughs> Are they always so needy? I don't know how you take them anywhere. Please leave. Fine. Whatever. This audience is a YouTube 6, Instagram 7 at best. <laughs> Moving on. What is completely unsurprising yet completely insane to me about these pickup tactics is that they ignore the inner world of women. They disregard the female experience. I guess to these guys... I don't care what they want. I only care what they respond to. But what about instances when women don't feel comfortable saying no, and they're reacting out of a need to just get it over with? What about circumstances where a woman is complying to your sexual pressure because of their own history with sexual abuse? There is a ton of trauma being bypassed and ignored by the process of pickup artists and the mentality of men today. And honestly, it's something we need to look at as the American dating male population. Never give someone an opportunity to say no. In other words, uh, you know, never allow someone to say no because there's a principle that I'm gonna teach you in a little bit. But once someone says no, it sticks as a no. So you can't allow them to say no. The two ways you do this is you, can, you never ask a question that allows for no response. 
Neil Strauss explained more about how he and other PUAs saw consent. You make out, you remove her shirt. She removes your shirt. You start to remove her bra. What's this? She's stopping you from going any further? The PUAs have a name for this. Last Minute Resistance, or LMR. And then right when I'm about to get into her pants, she stops me. She gives me a last minute resistance. Back up one or two steps, then continue. Wash, rinse, repeat. It's not real. It's just ASD, anti-slut defense. She doesn't want you to think she's easy. Or she doesn't want to move forward, but now feels uncomfortable pumping the brakes, and you're pressing onward without any care for what she wants or desires or how she's acting. You see that? There's a little difference there. After all this work, all this planning, all this game, when it is finally time to take the next step and actually have sex, how often do you think men are asking for enthusiastic consent? Is the objective only to get your dick wet? Even if it means that the woman didn't leave your apartment feeling good about the encounter? Where in these courses and in these tips on picking up women is a discussion about checking in with how a woman is feeling? If someone is limp, if someone is motionless, blank face, staring off into space, or they have not verbally said yes, those are all clues that you do not have consent. Over 80% of American women have been sexually harassed or assaulted, and a majority of female victims of rape first experienced such victimization early in life, with 81.3% reporting that it first occurred prior to the age of 25. Women with a past of sexual abuse have neural pathways that kick in when they are about to be used for their body. Freezing, going quiet, compliance, just getting it over with. This is not consent. These are the gray areas of hookup culture that need to be known, need to be taught, need to be normalized within the consciousness of young men trying to get girls. Yeah, I mean, if it was like a self-help, self-improvement thing, that's one thing. But teaching men to deliberately go out and degrade women as sex objects is totally wrong. The prime real estate is that hunk of kush that she's got hanging there. They've learned from their mother, their aunts, their sisters. This is the piece of real estate that's going to get you anything you want if you learn how to work it right. And a lot of time it comes from withholding. I ask you, straight men, what if you empathized with their situation? Approached women with honesty and sincerity, struck up genuine conversations, and stayed steadfast in the knowledge that you are worthy of a woman and of love as long as you're willing to work on yourself and not take the easy way out. Hey, I remember you. Did you know I could tell your horoscope based on how many times you kissed me? Please, Flame, not now. Not ever, actually. Hey, can I borrow them for a little bit? I wanted to ask them something kind of private in that back corner over there. By my dishwasher? Absolutely not. <laughs> Did you know that every time you think about something, your eyes go back and to the right? <laughs> that means you like to think about stuff. I wish he was making these up as a joke and not just using lines from the game. Gah, that's my cue. Uh, gotta get back to my friends, but why don't we trade Insta handles and I'll get back to you later? Out, out of here, Flame. Out, this generation's smarter than that. Wait, don't you wanna see me kinda make a beer bottle levitate? I have tarot cards. God, do I hope we're past the part of the human timeline where magicians get fucked more than scientists. Two, three. And then it happened. Ah, my God. Dating is tough. Real connection takes work. Attracting someone you find attractive isn't easy if you're not the most handsome guy in the room. Even handsome men have trouble finding what they're looking for. An in-person social interaction is getting less and less easy to participate in in the age of COVID. Social media, working from home, our attachment to our phone, all these things give us less practice just being a person with another person. It would be so easy to dismiss this entire exercise as sexist, manipulative, some might say pathetic. But before you judge, you should keep in mind that some of the men taking part in these seminars have never in their entire lives been able to interact socially with women. Our parents hardly teach us how to do it. Our schools don't. But pickup artists and dating coaches do. They are fulfilling the supply for a demand, but sometimes in the cheapest way possible. 
It's like if you don't like how your face looks and you just got a Jawser size instead of seeing how you are truly fucking beautiful. Oh, you don't know what Jawser size is? When I first saw this product, I thought it looked kind of crazy. So what I discovered is that after using this product after maybe 100 or 200 reps, all of a sudden I feel all this blood flow coming into my, into my face, into my scalp. Pickup philosophy is so shallow, it's the Jawser size of romantic self-improvement. You heard it here, folks. Focusing on the sex over the connection with another person removes you from your own humanity, your love, your empathy, and it turns a woman into something that only exists to boost your ego or satisfy you sexually. This is all a shallow and eventually fruitless endeavor. Any product that tells you to be less of your true self or to pretend to be someone else is inherently flawed. The getting girls philosophy lowers your self-esteem and aims to lower a woman's so much so they feel shitty enough to sleep with you. That's really what it is. Maybe that sounds arrogant, but I just know a lot more about um, things like spirituality and heart and metaphysics and stuff like that. I know more about uh, the 8,000 different nerve endings that are part of a woman's vagina. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I know all the orgasm stuff, like, um, so I just teach them how to become better, happier people. How old are you guys? I'm 30 and she's 19. What I found through all this is that the key to dating or just talking to women is finding what you're good at, what makes you you, and being so confident in that that any rejection or invitation to romance cannot take it away. It's a practice that can still look like going out and interacting with women in bars, parks, on the street, or online, as you'll see in my next video, but it is rooted in collaboration with whoever you're talking to. It's fueled by mutual appreciation, empathy, and enthusiastic consent. Very important. Handling women, handling this part of your life is about choice. And if you're so focused on getting better at picking up girls and, and you actually lose why, why it is you want women in your life and, and what it is that they're doing for your life, uh, you're not successful and you're not the best, right? People are, people are the best when they're with a woman and they're truly happy and they're truly in a great relationship, however they define their relationships. Mystery here. I'm currently in Bali, Indonesia, where the waters, wink, wink, are warm. So now that we know that the three decades old pickup philosophy and its tactics lead to a rejection of self, a degradation of a woman's worth, and a sad future, what now? We all need teachers and guides through new experiences if we're having trouble with them. What are the alternatives? Are there people and resources out there now that we can get to help men achieve their romantic goals? Well, I'll have those answers and much more about the current state of dating coaches in my next video here on Real Fields. Hey folks, be sure to subscribe to my channel to get the next video on dating coaches and all the rest of my content. And special thanks to all the people who help me with notes or by sharing some of their own stories with Pick Up the Game or Dating. Allison Mandel, Dana Swanson, Karen Clancy, Matt Freed, Jesse McKeel, Ben Gonzalez, Ryan Thomas, Andrew Delman, and Max Johansson. Thanks.